Now, going into this season, Utah Valley has a lot of returning players to look at. And there's some big names on there that you might recognize from last year. One of those being Aaron Caprio. We'll talk about that later. Blake Frischnick, Zach Moss, Ahmed Lamar. These, this is a great crew to have coming back for Coach Moss. Yeah, absolutely. It's a great, uh, talented bunch. You've got some seniority that are really going to set the tone and, and develop some good leadership for the team. And, uh, you know, I looked at Blake Frischnick. He was the goal scorer last year. Prolific in what he does. He's going to need help, though. He's not, he can't be the one that's going to have to do everything uh, every single game. You can't expect that. So I, I want to see who's going to step up as outside wings, especially to help in that attack. But with uh, Aaron Caprio coming back as leadership, with uh, Alec Felix in the middle, look for uh, Aaron Meyer coming back off the mission. If he can stay healthy and, and be fit, he's an absolute game changer for, for UVU. Now, a game changer on the other side for the Mustangs, Eduardo Perez. And he is one of those guys that his coaches continue to talk about and to lean on. Last year, one of the top goal scorers for the team. One of the, the facilitating factors of this, of this club. And really, Coach Sampson says where this guy goes, the team goes. Yeah, you know, he's an absolute fantastic talent. Good with his feet. He's going to be the one, their number 10, to develop and, and try to you know, create everything for them. So if UVU can key on him and the Wolverines shut him down, that could be huge for them going into this game. Well, it's going to be a big matchup tonight. Again, the home opener for the Wolverines. It's the Mustangs of Cal Poly taking on the Wolverines of Utah Valley. And it's going to be next on UVU TV, the Wax Digital Network, KSL TV app, and online on YouTube. Hey, you got one of those insurance apps too? You know how this thing works? No, sorry. Not an app, it's my agent. In this moment. No, I'm fine, thanks. It's good to know you have a trusted, independent auto owner's insurance agent who's there when you need them. Great. Man, I gotta get one of those. Auto owner's insurance. The no problem people. Neil Dastrup Insurance, your local independent auto owner's insurance agency, supports UVU Athletics. The beautiful Clyde Field on the campus of Utah Valley University is tonight's backdrop for the Cal Poly Mustangs and Utah Valley Wolverines showdown. Brandon Crow alongside Thomas Loomis, thank you for letting us be a part of your evening here on UVU TV. Beautiful home crowd, home atmosphere. The temperature has dropped considerably since that women's game, and it's nice temperatures all around for Utah Valley. Utah Valley starting lineups. Go ahead and introduce us to the 2019 Wolverines, Thomas. Yeah, everyone here on this list is returning. You've got Alec Felix that's going to hold down the center. Mark Brown of the defense. Blake Frischnick, your scorer up top. Look to him to uh, try and find a goal tonight. Leo Fuchs, another starting forward. Jaden Wagner at the outside back. Ahmed Longmire will probably start at the center back position alongside Caleb White. Zaire Vasquez, one of the outside wings. Aaron Meyer one of those center back or defensive mid rolls uh, are sorry in the, yeah in the center uh, with Aaron Caprio sitting behind him and Mitch Jensen starting goal tonight coming off of injury with a point to prove now on the other side for the Mustangs of Cal Poly they are led by coach Sampson very famous name in the soccer world yes it is that coach Sampson from the national team from UCLA and from the Galaxy he, this is his starting lineup tonight Eddie Melgoza Diego Alonso Daniel Clem, Freeman, Duamina, Jason Hernandez, Emmanuel Perez, Robert Knights, Jackson Brady, Josh Graham, Spencer Held, and Colin Hyatt. And I know I spoke with, with Coach before the game, and he's looking for a handful of players on this team. Josh Graham, he from overseas, played in the Man City Academy. He said that he, Colin Hyatt, and Spencer Held are the three, essentially the three team captains and the anchors of this club. And uh, he looks for them for leadership on and off the pitch and we'll see what they do for this Cal Poly team that's returning a handful of people from last year not as strong and, and predicted as uh, people have predicted for them in the conference but those are the starting lineups the Green Man Gang is getting the crowd involved and we're going to take a quick break we'll be right back with the game on the pitch after this the latest from KSO 5 news including breaking news as it happens and all your favorite KSL shows, ready to watch anytime. 
Download the free KSL app right now on all your favorite devices. In the WAC, we value sportsmanship on the field, on the track, on the court, in the pool, and in the stands. We take pride in playing fair and being honest. We honor the game by showing respect for our opponents, the officials, the fans, and our team. Great sportsmanship is about keeping everything in perspective. It's about taking ownership after a loss. And being humble after a win. We hope you'll team up with us by staying positive on the sidelines. Because great sportsmanship is what unites us. We, we are, are the Western Athletic Conference. Conference. Looking to spend that birthday money, Tyler? I'm just not sure which one to get. Well, they are both pretty cool. But saving some of that money would be pretty cool, too. Yep. When's the right age to teach your children how to save and spend money wisely? Right now. With the Be Money Smart program only at Utah Community Credit Union. Inspiring smart decisions. What's the difference between buying from Murdoch and buying from somebody else? In a word, confidence. You'll love our price match guarantee, our five-day exchange policy, and don't forget car washes and safety inspections for life. If you need a new vehicle, consider Murdoch Chevrolet. I promise you'll love it. Before you even think about buying a new truck or SUV, you've got to check out MurdochChev.com. You'll be glad you did. We've got huge discounts on all 2018 models, and you're going to love the 2019 Silverado. Only a Murdoch Chevrolet in Logan and Woods Cross. You've, you've got to come and see it. You only need to answer one question. All right, our you officiating crew for tonight, tonight, referee Alex Kralo, no assistant where you referee are. Alan Jimenez, and then Mitch Lillewhite. And that is the crew. As we see it right there, the black bottoms, yellow tops on top, they're going to be officiating this match. Again, it is the home opener for the Utah Valley Wolverines against the Cal Poly Mustangs. And both teams are leading the little ones out on the field, as is tradition, Utah Valley in the black. And I don't even know what you call it. You call it like a midnight black with like a neon trim, Thomas? What do you think? Yeah, I'm loving it. It's uh, definitely a different look. They're playing on that neon green, like you said. A little uh, different green than tradition, but uh, absolutely loving the unis this, for this year. Yeah, we'll see if we can put a good word in for Coach Moss, if we can get one of those. I know you would probably easily get one more than I would, but. <laughs> Hopefully, I would love to rock one of those. Cal Poly, the visiting team in their away whites with the green trim. Willie the Wolverine leading the final kids out there on the pitch to join both squads as we get set for the national anthem to christen the official 2019 home opener for the Utah Valley Wolverine season. And now the national anthem.
Yeah, all right, there you have it. The official 2019 season has been christened by the National Anthem. Coaches now meeting along with the referees and the players, giving their pregame daps and hugs before feelings get hurt and tempers flare. Yeah, those are about the only handshakes from the opposing <laughs> teams that you're going to see tonight. With this type of energy, home opener, massive crowd. We've got at least 3,000 out and growing. Uh, it's going to be an exciting night. You can have, you can expect high, high energy from UVU, and it's going to raise energy at Cal Poly to match it. So, perfect, perfect weather, perfect backdrop. You can't have a better summer night. Coach Steve Sampson again in the pregame saying about Utah Valley, he expects UVU to be energized and organized, and it's never a Greg Moss team if they're not prepared, were his words. Yeah, exactly. I mean, they've had a month that they've been together preseason, but they have a ton of returning players. All starting 11 are returning players. You don't see a new freshman on the team, so these guys know each other, some good camaraderie. They, uh, you know, played a decent season last year, and I only expect something better. And as you are well aware of, Thomas, you played in your fair share of season openers. Utah Valley, their record, 5-0-0. Speaks for itself, really, 4-0-0 at home. They take a lot of pride in playing here on Clyde. Oh, absolutely. They protect this place, and, uh, you know, they do it with the demeanor that is very prideful. They love this place, and it feels good to play in front of this crowd. Beautiful turf, uh, awesome setting with great weather. It's something they're comfortable with. And the energy after being off season, you come back refreshed, healthy, and uh, you're just absolutely excited, amped with energy as we take off right now. Game on, Utah Valley versus Cal Poly. Again, as we see it and you see it, Cal Poly going from left to right in their whites with the green trim, Utah Valley going from right to left in their midnight black with the neon green. It's a rocking place right now, Utah Valley at Clyde Field, full capacity crowd for the home opener. And right on early, the Mustangs of Cal Poly trying to get some offense on the near side. This ball played in toward the box, poked away by Utah Valley's defensive side. Yeah, both teams there a little nervous off the start, just looking to knock it long, uh, test each other out as Cal, Cal Poly is able to receive that and, and uh, take the first test on frame. And here comes Utah Valley with the crowd building behind him. Zaire Vasquez going to his left. Does he have enough? Clean challenge, says the official. He yeah, can... he, he got a lot of ball, but he, he knocked Zaire in the process. But I think he got ball first, so correct call by the referee. Wagner to throw in. Meyer, as you mentioned, one of the handful of members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints on this squad and those who have served two-year full-time LDS missions. And again, those in those two years, these players are not practicing, they're not conditioning every day as, as you know and as I know. And uh, to have Aaron Meyer to be back out here on the pitch in soccer form speaks very highly of his work ethic. Yeah, absolutely. He's only been home a few months, and uh, I had the privilege of playing with him, and I say privilege in saying that he's probably one of the best attacking center mids that I've uh, ever played with coming out of the FC Dallas Academy. So just an absolute stud as he gets the ball poked away as, we, as I compliment him. But, Na naturally. Uh, yeah, he's going to be an absolute presence if he can stay fit and healthy, and that'll be the test. Brown gets knocked down on the far side. It'll be Utah Valley free kick. And they'll play that one back to the man in between the posts, Mitch Jensen. Mitch Jensen also coming off of uh, a major injury of uh, tearing his meniscus last year. So he was in recovery the entire year and has uh, proven the starting spot. And I know that's a competitive role between the goalkeepers. A lot of talent there for the Wolverines. So says a lot about how he's come back in off of his injury this last year. Robert Knight now fighting his way through that Utah Valley defense. Wagoner and Knights is the matchup on this near side. Headed down by Cal Poly towards the center. And really a poor touch by the Mustangs. Spencer Held wishes he could have that one back, but Utah Valley will gladly take that one away as they look to go upfield. Zaire Vasquez now. 
Yeah, as you've seen from the start, it's a lot of high energy, guys flying around. Um, hasn't been a, a great showing of possession thus far, but uh, you'll look to that, that, that'll settle down with a little bit of time and uh, some build up. Watch these guys play across field a little bit more with the fast touches that we're seeing now. Near side, Wagner trying to keep it in, but that ball a little bit too spicy for him. Had an extra mustard on that one. Yeah, Ahmed will want that one back. You hear Greg Moss, coach for the Wolverines, demanding him to play that early. Causes some urgency and just uh, hits that one a little, a little high for Wagner. Longmire with the ball for Utah Valley. Trying to take on two Cal Poly defenders, ultimately loses that battle. Yeah, a little much there for Longmire. I think that he could have maybe gotten rid of it a couple touches early, give it to Vasquez, and uh, Wolverines could have kept the ball. That one trickles off the feet of Melgoza and will go out of play for a Utah Valley throw in. A quick throw in at that by the Wolverines. And dispossessed by the Mustangs. And dispossessed right back by Utah Valley. Good one touch passing by the Wolverines, sent in toward the box, nothing doing there as it was booted out by the Mustangs. You've used best uh, attack so far. Good win in the middle. But uh, you've seen Cal Poly, they're staying organized and they get back behind the ball quickly. You now you expected UVU on that to counter fast, but uh, Cal Poly doing a great job of getting numbers back behind the ball, making it difficult to break down. Six minute, nobody yet to put up a shot. And both teams really feeling each other out, trying to find their rhythm, so to speak. Yeah, exactly. So this is good for the Wolverines. Slow the game down a little bit. Get some touches and knock the ball. You'll have some movement, some testing, and then that's when they'll look to have Cal Poly step up, find that through ball and start breaking them down going forward. A little poor of a pass by Utah Valley on the far side. Gives away Cal Poly trying to keep it in bounds, and they do. Looking up field, trying to find Spencer Held. Spencer Held, the big target for Cal Poly. They list him at 6'3", 180. It might, it might be a little bit on the lighter side and the shorter side. Yeah, I was going to say, he absolutely looks everything of that 6'3". Long, big player. You can look to him to uh, hold the ball, be that target forward up top, to hold it down and just and distribute you know, off of his feet, off of his chest and head as they'll probably find him in the air as well. Held one of the many transfers for Cal Poly, played three years at Cal. One of those extra seniors with that veteran leadership that Coach Sampson's looking to for the squad to be successful. And that pass goes clear past the box and sent back in toward the box. Nothing doing as that goes atop of Mitch Jensen, set it up a goal kick. Yeah, Cal Poly, three graduate transfers. So a load of seniority and guys that have played, you know, three years with that fourth year of, ex of uh, eligibility, you know, that's going to do wonders for Cal Poly with this experience, especially traveling on the road against a massive crowd on a home opener with high energy. That'll be good experience for the, for, uh, the Mustangs. Utah Valley trying to find Frischneck on the near side. This one headed out by Jackson Brady. It'll be a throw in for the Wolverines. Caleb White walking over. He will do the honors. As he sets up for the long throw. The two handed toss near side of the box, headed down, and ultimately kicked away by Diego Alonso by Cal Poly. Back to the feet of Longmire. Longmire sends this one in toward the right side of the box. Still in Utah Valley possession. 
Utah Valley still looking for their first shot, let alone their first shot on goal. And a little bit too fast on the far side. Mark Brown couldn't come up with it. Yeah, it's a good idea by Mark Brown to get around the corner uh, or around his outside wing, I should say. Um, give them numbers up just a little bit strong on, uh, on Alec Felix's touch there, unfortunately. Jason Hernandez takes his time. Good, strong boot past the logo in midfield. The heading game won by Utah Valley. Now the foot game trying to be won by Utah Valley. Brown with his mid-season form patented long hair. Last year he and, and uh, Zach Moss were going at it for the longest hair at the team, I think. Now that man right there with the ball, Aaron Caprio, what a story. Yeah, I mean, it was unfortunate. It was on this game last year, home opener, that uh, high energy goes to win a tackle and breaks his femur. Absolutely horrible and terrible circumstance. Honestly incredible that he is back here and starting after breaking a femur just a year ago. He, you know, I've talked with him and he has just absolutely worked so, so hard to get back in shape, dreaming of playing his senior year. He wouldn't have it any other way. It's, it's funny that you mentioned some of those things. Our UVU TV crew actually sat down and talked with Aaron and with Coach Moss and even Blake Frischneck earlier this week. And we'll have a special interview, a little halftime piece for you coming up at the, at the break. But you can really dive into and see just from this interview really how much he cares and how much time he took to, pre to prepare himself mentally, physically to be where he is. And he said one of those things, I won't give away too much, but one of those things he did say was that there was no way that he was going to miss that chance to lace it up one last time with his brothers out here on the pitch. Yeah, there's nothing like playing your senior year, giving everything you have after you've worked your entire life for that. And so, uh, you know, fortunate that he's able to get that, uh, you know, red shirt year, have an entire year to get back in shape. And like you said, absolutely unbelievable the work ethic that it must have you know, he must have put in to get to this point, be able to start on opening night. 11th minute still looking for a shot for either squad. Cal Poly giving away. Now here comes Utah Valley. Utah Valley trying to speed things up. Utah Valley has some numbers on this side. Zaire Vasquez. Vasquez has some options. Trying to chip this one over the defenders. Good defending by the Mustang back line. Couple players get tangled up. Referee says play on. Vasquez still with it. And that one is going to be an official stoppage to signal the Mustang bench to come over and take a look at their fallen player. As we take a look at that replay, hard tackle from Wagner. And it looks like Diego Alonso took the brunt of it. Honestly, a couple of really good tackles by Cal Poly is. Again, you view look to counter, but the Mustangs able to get back and get in position to make it difficult to break down. Um, they've been stout so far, and uh, you can only expect that out of, out of a coach and uh, of this caliber and his training that's gone into this. Cal Poly historically have been an incredible, incredible team. Um, they compete in the Big West Conference for that championship every single year have gone to the national tournament a number of times and made good runs. So uh, great squad, and it's going to be uh, a tough team to break down for sure. As we see Diego Alonso be escorted by his teammates off the pitch, number seven, Joe Mac Leonardo, comes in. We'll keep an eye out on uh, Diego Alonso's status, the senior from Berkeley, California. Utah Valley played it to the near side. Wagner. Wagner playing it back to Caprio. Longmire dispossessed. Referee blows the whistle in favor of Utah Valley. I think the Wolverines fortunate to, to get away with that one. Ahmed just trying to break him down a little bit. 
Takes this dribble to get around him, but I think it's pretty clean by the Mustang player there. Yeah, Robert Knight doing a good job and maybe a little unlucky. Like you said, I think the Wolverines will take it. Oh, yeah, <laughs> every call they can get their <laughs> way, no doubt. So far here, halfway through the 13th minute, as that ball sails off of the foot of Caprio, out of bounds via throw in by the Mustangs. Robert Knights will do the job. Both teams still trying to feel each other out. Majority of this game has so far has been played in this middle half of the pitch, just back and forth. Yeah, exactly. There hasn't been too many at, at all, really, any testing chances on either keeper yet so far. Ball keeps getting knocked around. You see UVU getting a little frustrated as they look to swing the ball and they want to do it quickly. That's two that have gone over their heads and out of bounds because they're looking to swing the ball fast. Zaire Vasquez, watch this number 11 on the left-hand side for the Wolverines. He's waving and asking for the ball, sitting super, super wide, looking for that long ball. If the center backs can find him or that defensive mid and they can be able to knock that early, he could be in behind. Frischneck checks the ball down to himself and switches up the pitch. And we'll, take, we'll keep an eye out on Zaire Vasquez here on the near side. Like you said, lots of space. And they heard your counsel and they went right over to him. Now back to Wagner. Now back to Caprio. Caprio trying to switch it up field. Nice one touch to Corral that still has possession. Tripped up from behind, Ref referee has the flag up and the signal indicating a foul. As we take another look at that replay. You see Leo battling right here. He's able to get away from the player and then tripped up again. Good draw and a perfect uh, spot for the Wolverines. Aaron Meyer, gonna be your man taking the set piece. Has an absolute finesse on the ball. We'll see how his skills are after a couple of years, if he can get a good ball into the mix here. Meyer's gonna take it. Meyer boots this one in towards the box. Looked like an absolute perfect opportunity for Utah Valley. That one laid up on a platter. Nobody home to put it in the back of the net. You heard the collective oohs and ahs from the crowd. I don't know how much better you can get from that one. I was just gonna say, you can't ask for more. Uh, puts it perfectly on the six as we watch this comes in that's the exact spot you want at testing where you see the goalkeeper come out and he wants to win that but it's in a scary spot to where any type of flick any type of touch by the Wolverines that should be in the back of the net unfortunately no one able to get there as the goalkeeper misses it that's the best opportunity for the Wolverines thus far Hernandez barely got a piece of that ball to confuse himself confuse everybody around him Now Utah Valley still with possession. Maybe they can breathe a sigh of relief. Like you said, a really nervy start for both of these teams, and maybe that they've got that one under control out of their system, they can start to settle down here. Yeah, exactly. I think so. That, I think that'll probably be the difference. The team that can settle down the fastest, that's probably going to be who has, is more comfortable and going to have a more attacking role. Blake Frischnick went up for that header right there and gets absolutely pushed two hands in the back. Mustang's lucky to not get a PK call there. Frischneck, we know from last year, prolific score, especially on set pieces. From our vantage point, I know viewers at home might think we're biased, but from our vantage point, that to me looked like a, a blatant push-off, something you'd see in, in the NFL or in the key in basketball. Two hands fully extended by the defender. But there's Frischneck with the ball, getting his turn. Dispossessed, Meyer with the blast, this one deflected. Now on the near side, switching it up, spreading out the field. Wagner, Wagner setting it in. This one played nicely on the Cal Poly defensive side by Robert Knight to blast that out of bounds. Still in Utah Valley possession. Wagner's ball deflected out. 
both times. Comes into Wagner, and he's got that left foot, that strong, dominant foot, exactly how he wants it. Uh, looked twice, then I think he could have got the ball on a tad earlier. Could have give the Wolverines a chance, but nonetheless draws a corner. Uh, you've seen the momentum shift a little bit more the Wolverines way the last few minutes. Utah Valley corner in the 18th minute. Time ticks away. Meyer will do the honors from the corner as well. Meyer sent this one in toward that back post, headed down, and then poked away right out of the goal. Beautiful defending by the Mustangs. Team defense. Looks like that was Emmanuel Perez, the guy that we highlighted earlier, showing why we highlighted him, doing the dirty work. Utah Valley looked like they had a surefire goal. He came out of nowhere to rescue his keeper, Jason Hernandez, who was out of place. Yeah, as you can see, Aaron Meyer hasn't lost a beat. Absolutely incredible the service that he's given both times um, on dead balls. And... Again, Mustang's lucky. That's why you got a guy in the back post. That if your keeper gets beat out of position, that you're there to clean it up. And uh, good job clearing that off the line. But good job, Wolverines, testing. You know, they're knocking on the door, doing what they can. If they can keep knocking the ball and keep possession, develop some more opportunities, uh, you know, I could see a goal before half. And that's what it's all about ultimately, right? The more repetitions, the more times you put the ball on goal toward goal, the better your chances of something actually going in. Yeah, exactly. Just like you said, the more chances you make, uh, obviously, you know, your percentages are going to go up. But more, it's going to give you, uh, you know, a more view or testing areas to see how the defenders are going to react and how you can go against them. There's Meyer now. Frischneck with it. Maybe too hard of a chip from Frischneck. He puts his hand up to say, my bad. As we take another look, beautiful header. Hernandez out of place, and Perez coming up, making the save. Yeah, you saw Frischnick, big uh, Frischnick able to get his head on the ball and knock that back post, catch his goalkeeper out of position. And there's another foul on the other side. This one was caught by the officials. Spencer held the culprit, and he's getting a talking to. Again, from the head referee tonight, the head official, Alex Cres Crello, excuse me. Yeah, it's physical play, but, you know, nothing cheap. So, fair foul as he gets another push, two hands in the back. So, you know, the referee's aware, and I think that he's going to be watching that, especially that he's seen it a couple times as these two go at it and talk a little bit after the play. A little extracurricular activity never hurt anybody, right? Yeah, no, it might lead to <laughs> something a little later, but, no, all part of the game for sure is you're gonna, emotion's going to get worked up. Nice dispossession by the Wolverines. And then quickly right back the other way by the Mustangs. Robert Knights. Robert Knight trying to lay it off. Here's a shot opportunity. This one goes over the head of Mitch Jensen. That one blasted by Joe Mac Leonardo. Yeah, back giveaway there by Alex Felix again. Needs to try and, and, and he was looking for a guy that he could get to the ball. Decided that he's going to try and dribble the player. But uh, I think maybe he's just got to knock that forward or try to find maybe go backwards and find an outside back's feet. Bad giveaway in the mid middle causes uh, the Mustangs to have a decent shot on frame. Tips back in toward Mustang possession. Again, Robert Knights seems to be calling his name left and right here tonight. This one plays on the outside to Brady. Brady played it back into Knights. Knights, one touch pass and trying to get the ball back. Instead, this is going to be a left boot strike. Mel Goza. Causes Mitch Jensen to dive on the right side. Scoop it up. Still nothing really overly threatening by Cal Poly. Yeah, and as you watch here, they're able to, again to get it, get the ball stolen in and play to the center of the park. And that's what I was just going to say that I've seen thus far that, you know, I haven't seen too much wing play from the Mustangs, that they win the ball and they look to go straight into their, their uh, attacking mids or that number 10 or 9 sitting at the top of the box and where they've developed, you know, those two shots in front of frame. That ball played a little bit, too much sauce on it. Back to Hernandez and Cole. Hernandez sees Blake Frischneck lurking. Plays it to the near side. Clem. Up the field trying to find Knights. Kept in play beautifully by 
Wagner, unfortunately, goes back to Cal Poly. Knights very composed. Good ball movement. And even better defense by Utah Valley. Yeah, scary moment there for the Wolverines. If that ball would have gone through, he might have been in on frame or around the corner. Do a good job of finding the ball, though, slowing the game down again. Give themselves a moment to rest, collect themselves, and then develop good positioning going forward to, to have a good attack. Again, thank you for joining us here on UVU TV tonight, the KSL TV app, YouTube, and the WAC Digital Network. Brandon Crow alongside Thomas Loomis. 23rd minute here at Clyde Field in Orm, Utah. Still 0-0 between the Mustangs of Cal Poly and the Utah Valley Wolverines. A beautiful night for soccer. Hashtag Friday Night Footy. Utah Valley's version of Friday Night Lights. Robert Knight himself with the ball for the Mustangs. Miscommunication. Now here comes Utah Valley wanting to stretch out this field. Now Frischneck with the head full of steam trying to go right at the defenders. A collision. And the referee who reaches into his pocket, looks at number 25, Daniel Clem, and throws up the yellow card in a very dangerous spot for Utah Valley to strike. You see Frischnick, he caught, caught at the end of that, that play, but he's able to get the ball. And this is what I've been waiting for, is someone to turn up speed and go full full speed at that, at that back line. You know, that's so hard to defend, and Frischnick does a good job of getting that pace up and able to push it past the defender. Defender do, does, you know, all he can do in that circumstance is just get in his way to draw the foul. Tries to push it around him and uh, draws exactly what should have been called. Set piece with the yellow card. Here goes Aaron Meyer. Aaron Meyer was good from about 40 yards if he was a field goal kicker. Just missed that one a little bit too much. <laughs> yeah, you know, I, I think I almost watched as he looked that he was maybe going to cross that ball and decided as he was walking up that he's going to hit it and try to put some more pace on it. It's difficult. When you're hitting that ball with pace, that's when it's going to tend to lift up on you and, he's, and he skies that trying to hit it with pace. Because from that far out, you are going to have to put some power on it. If you try to curl it and finesse it without power, it's going to be an easy cleanup for the keeper. Fresh new sub in the game, Regan Rice. For Cal Poly. Vasquez does well to keep possession for Utah Valley. Vasquez sends this one in toward the box right at the keeper, Hernandez. Good one, two there. Zaire gets it. And uh, just no one there in the box, unfortunately. Twenty fifth minute. Still scoreless. Cal Poly trying to make a run. At Utah Valley back line. Ahmed Longmeyer saying no can do. Regan Rice. Excuse me, I apologize. As Freeman Tramina is pleading with the official. Again, physical play. Ahmed just getting in the unfortunate position and, and fouling. Uh, giving the Mustangs their first free kick of the night. Be interesting to see the service that they play in. Probably going to look to play right on the top of the six or back post right on the six. And uh, test Mitch Jensen, see if he can come out and find it or if they can get ahead on the ball. Well, we already talked about Hyatt, excuse me, Spencer Held. That's six foot three and more like six foot five almost. The referee coming to speak his piece. On the top of the box, players jostling for position. Here comes the ball. Out swinger headed, missed by the Utah Valley defenders. Colin Hyatt couldn't get it. And Utah Valley breathed a sigh of relief. Yeah, that's exactly who I thought they were going to go for. You know, uh, Hyatt and Freeman, the big boys up top, try and find their heads in the air. And uh, just over Freeman's head, and Hyatt almost catches the end of it. Uh, just a little bit over the top. 
About halfway through this first half, overall th thoughts on what you're seeing right now, Thomas? You know, like we discussed earlier, a lot of uh, play in the middle, not a ton of formation or possession, I should say. And here come the white jerseys for Cal Poly, the Mustangs galloping, trying to find the breakthrough. Rice, fresh legs, fresh substitution. Back to Brady. Brady pops this one up in the air, and Jensen snags it. So as I was saying, you know, high energy, and you've seen that from both teams as there's been a little bit of physical play the last few minutes. Um, but it's forced them to be a lot more direct. Hasn't been a lot of great possession. And, uh, but as it's gone on, the, the game's opened up a little bit. They're seeing how they can break each other down. And uh, there's been a few more chances the last few minutes. So, you know, with a little bit past halfway in, into this uh, half here, I see that there's probably going to be a few more chances. This is going to open up as players become a tad more tired and stretched. So I think it's going to be which team can develop a little bit more of the possession. And from there, they're going to have more chances to get in behind each other. Now, this might sound like a broken record, sound like a cliche thing, but you know playing at various different elevations. Anytime a team that comes in from California or from the West Coast, especially a team like this playing at, at sea level or a little bit above sea level, coming up into a high elevation like Utah, it definitely does wear on you quicker than you think. You're exactly right. Yeah, playing at sea level, these guys right near the coast, um, it's definitely going to be testing to see if you're fitting in shape coming up to, you know, this level. That was a beautiful display of feet wizardry, if you will. <laughs> and then an excellent display of the power that Caleb White has, just barely missed on the outside. Aaron Meyer, the technical player, he's going to cut you up, and then he can hit it from distance and, and do it, you know, exactly how he wants to. Put some power on it there, just a little bit wide of the of the right outside post. Looks like Frischnick dummied that one, almost thought that the Meyer was going to be there in that last play. Cal Poly ends up taking it the other way. Now Brady for Cal Poly. Melgoza. Hyatt. Rice. Rice with the left shot. Just above Mitch Jensen's outstretched arms. Yeah. Great, great opportunity there for the Mustangs. He's able to get it on his right foot, cut in onto his left, which I think he might be dominant. Puts it on his left foot and has a great shot back post just over the crossbar. We officially hit the halfway, excuse me, the half hour mark. Again, first half, Utah Valley, Cal Poly. Chances starting to turn up for both teams. Referee says, Foul on the Mustangs. And Wagner slow to get up. We heard that thud as soon as he hit that ground as he did so about 50 feet away from us. Yeah, Wagner received that ball, goes to get around him on that left-hand side. And Rice just catches his ankle, trying to win that ball. Wagner plays it back to White. Strong tackle at midfield. Utah Valley possession. Longmire. As we see Utah Valley trying to sub in Vargas at the next opportune moment. Meyer with the header. Clever touch by Utah Valley. And Hernandez grabs it. You got to love the idea there by Frischnick because he has a good one touch from Zaire Vasquez giving him the giving him the ball there and then looks to back heel it back to Vasquez for that hit. Just didn't quite have the connection there. Zaire Vasquez didn't see exactly what first Nick was looking to play. And the referee calling over yet another Cal Poly Mustang. It looks like he's got a card in his hand as well. And this is gonna go against Eddie Melgoza. 
Yeah, we've seen three or four, you know, those plays by Cal Poly. I don't think necessarily Melgosa. You know, he hasn't had three foul, fouls per se, so unfortunate for him. But just the team as a whole, referee wants to have a little bit of control and settle the game down, make sure that there's a little bit less of, you know, those two hands in the back. White coming up from his back spot, left side. Vasquez. Booted straight up in the air. Wagner trying to come down with it for Utah Valley. White again finds it, plays it all the way back. And Frischneck jostling for position, getting mugged from behind, playing on. Frischneck comes over to the left-hand side. Back heel. There's a spot opportunity just on the left side. Laid it off for Felix. <laughs> Frischnick battling up top of that big body. You can see him probably getting pulled, but he's able to win that ball. Cuts across here to the left side hand side, fakes the shot, and does a beautiful job laying off to Alex Felix, who has a first time shot just wide of that left post. Coming into the match for Utah Valley, Luis Vargas and Luis Garza. Los Luises. Yeah, Vargas doing a great job. This half working super hard, and uh, you know Vargas, talented, talented player. Look him, look for him to come in with fresh legs, and keep working on that left back or right back, I should say, for Cal Poly. Now here's Rice for the Mustangs. Rice and Caprio, battle of the fours, going after it. Referee blows the whistle. A little late whistle. Greg Moss with his hands in the air, along with the Utah Valley coaches. There's yeah. Caprio. You see Rice dribbling in, gets a little bit of the tug on his jersey, but uh, I think Rice does a really good job of, you know, taking that moment to, to sell it or, or fall a little bit as a player should if you're getting tugged and draws a great foul and a great set piece for the Mustangs. This has been a battle so far early on in this game. And could this be the breakthrough opportunity that the Mustangs have been searching for? 34th minute. Eddie Melgoza, you'll see he's left-footed player. He's going to look to hit an in-swinger on the frame right here. Melgoza gets the ball where he wants it. This is a scary spot for Miss Jensen because he either probably puts it on the six and has all these guys running on the ball. There's the ball towards that back post. On the ground, bouncing around, finally cleared out of the box by Utah Valley. And another whistle is called on the far side, and the referee reaches in his pocket, grabs out another yellow, this time in the direction of Spencer Held. Yeah, I think he overhit that a little bit to the back post, and uh, Alec Felix does a great job dribbling that out. You know, most players, they're just going to try to clear the ball in that, in that moment, but he didn't have anyone up top, so he looks to dribble, get around the corner, draws the foul. Again, another yellow card. So... Cal Poly drawing up the cards here, and uh, that's going to be tough because they're not going to be able to play as aggressive in the second half. And you see head coach Steve Sampson pleading his case to the middle official here. Seems a little lopsided, that's what I heard him say. But here goes Frischneck. Frischneck doing what he does best, attacking. Frischneck into the box. Frischneck receives collision. Referee signals no. Another amazing play there by Frischnick. His speed is deceiving. As he gets that ball and he goes downhill against you, he pushes to the right side and gets past the defense. And, uh, you know, I think the ref doesn't call that because the ball kind of gets away from him last second and uh, probably wasn't able to make a play on, the, on it. The goalkeeper most likely would have gotten there in time. And so, you know, I might side with the referee on that call there, but Wolverines definitely wanting a PK and uh, a little frustrated right there. Wolverines definitely wanting a PK, especially after that PK that they lost 1-0 to against Portland just the other week. Now here comes Frischneck again. Frischneck trying to hit an inside-out toe poke towards that back post corner. Yeah, uh, Luis Vargas does. Oh, we, right now we have the playback of Frischneck getting in behind. You know, you watch the replay in slow motion, probably looks worse than it did at life speed as he gets a <laughs> shoulder into the chest. But, uh, yeah, I don't know. I think that might have, could have gone either way. The P 
people saying that soccer is not a contact sport. Oh, you know, people don't know the game <laughs> and are a little naive if, if, uh, if you've been hearing that. There goes Frischneck. Frischneck heads this one down towards himself. That was a poor clearance. Frischneck into the box. Frischneck still with it. Frischneck, nobody home for Utah Valley to put that one in. Absolute blunder by the goalkeeper. That's what you want as a forward to be able to get the ball and run straight at one on one at the goalkeeper. Defender does a good job of getting there and behind. Physical play as Frischnick throws his shoulder, knocks him over, gets around the corner, and uh, Mustang's really lucky that the Wolverines weren't able to get a toe on that quick enough. That back line defense for the Mustangs might have saved him that goal. Frischnick did look initially, as soon as he headed that one down towards himself, thought about maybe chipping that one over Hernandez, but he had hot pursuit from behind, couldn't let him do so. Yeah, it's a tough angle right there. And so if you've got players running in, that's absolutely going to be your best chance is to cut it back to someone running in, and they can smash it into the net from six yards out. 37th minute drum line in the background that you hear the Green Man Gang part of this electrifying Clyde Field atmosphere the coach Greg Moss and these Wolverines take a lot of pride in and playing for because that one comes right over here to the scores table and you were ready to head that one back in field <laughs> yeah just a few feet away give my chance substitution for Cal Poly coming into the match Andrew Robertson Stepping off the field, getting a, a break is Joe Mac Leonardo. As you take a look on that far side of the pitch, the student section, the 12th man that they call him, jumping up and down in unison. Yeah, gotta love the atmosphere at Clyde Field, the 12th Wolverines getting into it. Uh, you know, they set records every single year of being in the top 10, 15 for uh, crowd attendance. And so any team that hasn't played here, it's a bit unexpected because most games you're not going to have, you know, between three to 3,500, uh, you know, fans here. And it just raises the intensity and the level of energy. It's such a great, great place to play. Dangerous giveaway ball by Utah Valley, saved by an even poor touch by the Mustangs. As we approach the 39th minute and set to check in for the Mustangs on the next opportunity is Creed McKinnon. For right now, Utah Valley trying to find that equalizing goal. Equalizing, excuse me, trying to find the breakthrough goal. <laughs> Feels like they have they've had a goal so far. You know they've been knocking on the door. I think they've had the better chances this latter part of the first half. Absolutely. There's Caprio to his friend and compadre Blake Frischneck. This one defended well, played back to Hernandez. That one he learned from his mistake before. A better clearance. Longmeyer heads that one down. Caprio on his horse. Comes away with it and boots that one into the parking lot for Utah Valley. Frischnick does a really good job of sitting on that, on that uh, last Looks guy, really sure. bodying up, and then is able to check, check to the ball and create a lot of space. Any kid watching at home, if you want to be a target forward, this is the exact way to do it. The part that the Wolverines are missing at this point is that last through ball through or that touch to beat a player, and that's going to be, you know, if the breakthrough moment is that last part where they can connect that final pass. That's going to be the difference for Wolverines putting a goal in before half here. Caprio hit like a one-hop shot from the pitch all the way to the UCCU center where the Wolverine men basketball team play. So they had to look for another ball. Finally got one in from the near side of the pitch. Quick start. Sent back in toward the box, but ultimately out of play by the Mustangs. Yeah, nice chance there by, by the Mustangs, but uh, just not able to connect very well with it. Skies it over the top. Caprio probably could have looked to play and keep possession of plays outside back, but as the Mustangs were flying in, he just chose to be safe and knock that out of bounds and let the Wolverines get into better positioning defensively. 
41st minute. Less than five minutes to play here in the first half. Can any team find the back of the net in this short amount of time? Utah Valley, like you said, has been knocking on the door more so than Cal Poly. But you have to tip your caps off to Coach Sampson and his squad. Very well disciplined on defense. We talked about it from the beginning. It's going to be a tough team to break down. They're a, a great team, stout defense. And they're going to be physical and make it super, super hard for you to get in behind them. So, you know, I think it's a great test for uh, Utah Valley. If they can just be a little bit better connected and uh, composed in and around that 18, that's going to be the difference maker. You know, unfortunately, this half you just haven't seen it. You've seen, you know, some dangerous plays that have developed the last few minutes. But well, there hasn't been, you know, that, that composing Meyer. last pass and touch. Like Checking in number 32, Becca Aaron Rice. Aaron Meyer's going to take a breather, most likely for the rest of the first half. Becca Rice checks on for Utah Valley. Rice, the pride of Campala, Uganda, in Foothill High School in Las Vegas. Hoping to add some flair to this Utah Valley squad with the remaining minutes of this first half. Good one-touch passing by Utah Valley. White gets sandwiched by a couple Mustangs. Becca Rice gets his first touch against Regan Rice. And there goes Regan Rice showing off his speed. Cal Poly dispossessed. Now Caleb White. Back up field for Utah Valley. Vargas for the Wolverines. Felix looking for Garza. Good closing speed from behind by Caprio, who's upset at the foul call. Clip Spencer held. Good sportsmanship to bring it back up. Yeah, he looked to win the ball there, but uh, Spencer Spencer held did a good job of getting his body in, in between him and the ball on the right, right decision there by the referee. So he comes through his back and knocks him over. So a free kick opportunity just about at the midfield line. 43rd minute, about halfway through. Another substitution for, for the Mustangs in the wings. Mustangs are going to send this one almost to no man's land. And headed out of play by Utah Valley. So coming into the match for the final two minutes. Matthew Batista. Batista's just trying to find who he's going to come in for. And it looks like he will be coming in for Melgoza. As the first half dwindles, the breeze starting to pick up, cooler temperatures. The women's game before this, temperatures were. 95 degrees. Now it's dipped down about 84. Prime soccer weather. Here's a clever flick play on ball by the Mustangs. Solid defense by Utah Valley. Great outlet pass. Lots of black jerseys. Here's Frischneck on the left side. And this one booted right back towards Coach Moss and Utah Valley. Actually stayed in play flirted with that line as we are less than one minute left to play here in the first half. You know, it, that's an absolute great ball there by Felix. Hoping to get a chance there, you know, in the last bit of this first half. But that's as I talked about before. I think we were lacking a little speed on the outside wing years before where you had Hoffmeister, Carson Payton, players like that. Just absolute takeaway speed that as they are able to get that ball, they're going straight at that goal. And uh, unfortunately, I think that that speed isn't quite there on the wings, and they're gonna have to figure out a different way to break teams down. Cal Poly just been, been able to get back behind them, or as they get beat, catch them without that breakaway speed. It's gonna be a little tough for the Wolverines. Seven, six, five, four, three, two. Cal Poly is gonna let that ball Ball without a play on it, and you the whistle, the horn, 
signals the end of the first half. 0-0. Utah Valley with a shot on goal and a corner kick to add. Cal Poly, no kicks from the corner. No shots on goal. A quick brief overall first half analysis, my friend. You know, I would say from the beginning, high energy. Uh, and as it developed, became super, super physical. More side uh, from Cal Poly. Not a lot of great chances. Wolverines finally able to start breaking them down towards the latter half and uh, had a couple chances that maybe with the right call that they could have put away. Wolverines maybe should be up one new going into the second half. As you see it right there again, Cal Poly zero, Utah Valley zero. We'll take a quick break. Be right back with the Aaron Caprio bio after this. The latest from KSL 5 News, including breaking news as it happens, and all your favorite KSL shows, ready to watch anytime. Download the free KSL app right now on all your favorite devices. In the WAC, we value sportsmanship on the field, on the track, on the court, in the pool, and in the stands. We take pride in playing fair and being honest. We honor the game by showing respect for our opponents, the officials, the fans, and our team. Great sportsmanship is about keeping everything in perspective. It's about taking ownership after a loss. And being humble after a win. We hope you'll team up with us by staying positive on the sidelines. Because great sportsmanship is what unites us. We, we are, are the Western Athletic Conference. Conference. Looking to spend that birthday money, Tyler? I'm just not sure which one to get. Well, they are both pretty cool. But saving some of that money would be pretty cool, too. Yep. When's the right age to teach your children how to save and spend money wisely? Right now, with the Be Money Smart program only at Utah Community Credit Union. Inspiring smart decisions. What's the difference between buying from Murdoch and buying from somebody else? In a word, confidence. You'll love our price match guarantee, our five-day exchange policy, and don't forget car washes and safety inspections for life. If you need a new vehicle, consider Murdoch Chevrolet. I promise you'll love it. Before you even think about buying a new truck or SUV, you've got to check out MurdochChev.com. You'll be glad you did. We've got huge discounts on all 2018 models, and you're going to love the 2019 Silverado. Only a Murdoch Chevrolet in Logan and Woods Cross. You've got to come and see us. We need to answer one question. Will you accept the challenge to become? No matter where you are in life, no matter your interests, from award-winning accounting to marketing and entrepreneurship programs, there's a place for you at Utah Valley University. A place to engage, to rise, to succeed, to become. Halftime here at Utah Valley, still 0-0 between the Wolverines and the Mustangs of Cal Poly. We mentioned earlier on in the first half, one of the great stories that you'll hear is from Utah Valley's senior, Aaron Caprio. Aaron Caprio suffered a horrific injury last year, and this is his first time being able to come back. Our UVU TV crew was able to sit down with him this week and talk about what his rehab process was like coming back. You know, when, I, when the accident happened, I just kind of was like, oh, that was weird. Um, but it wasn't. I know uh, Aaron coming off the field uh, was distraught for his teammates and uh, being in surgery uh, with him at 2.30 that night, uh, all he could think about was his team. So uh, I know he wanted to get back and, and I've never seen someone's recovery from such a uh, horrific uh, accident uh, come back so quickly. I mean, he was determined that by January he was already uh, training with the team full time. So, uh, you know, he's... Uh, uh, he's an inspiration to all of us, for sure. You know, I mean, last year coming to games, my, my wife can attest to this. You know, I it, I would tear up coming to games, just seeing my teammates, and then also feeling their you know love and care for me, and uh, their compassion towards me as I you know came back to to just watch them, you know, and, and watch them in their season. Um, I mean, they were phenomenal in everything UVU did for me. Um, as far as, you know, social media, the hashtag four cap stuff, I mean, that stuff was touching, man. And uh, it's one of those things that for me really motivated me to, to come back and play. I mean, I was a senior last year. Um, I could have very easily hung up the boots and, and called it good and, and moved on with my life. Uh, my wife and I are having a kid and 
you know, I, I'm starting the family. I mean, it, it would have been very easy for me to, to be done with it. Um, but, you know, something I've definitely learned about this, my, about myself through this process is uh, my love, my passion, not only for this game, but for the school of uh, Utah Valley University. Excellent work by our UVU TV staff creating that piece. And again, Aaron Caprio, what more can you say about that guy? Absolute workhorse and a stud, as the kids say nowadays. Utah Valley, zero. Cal Poly, zero. It is halftime. We'll be right back with a little more analysis in the second half on UVU TV right after this. Here at Intermountain Healthcare, our doctors have experience treating young athletes, professional athletes, and the athlete next door. We treat everyday injuries, sports injuries, concussions, total joint replacements, and everything in between. Come visit our board certified physicians and surgeons here at Intermountain Healthcare's Utah Valley Orthopedic and Sports Medicine Clinic. We're committed to keeping you moving. Well, hey, you got one of those insurance apps too? You know how this thing works? No, I'm sorry. Not an app, it's my agent. In this moment, no, I'm fine, thanks. It's good to know you have a trusted, independent auto owner's insurance agent who's there when you need them. Great. Man, I gotta get one of those. Auto owner's insurance. The no problem people. Neil Dastrup Insurance, your local independent auto owner's insurance agency, supports UVU Athletics. You only need to answer one question. Will you accept the challenge to become? No matter where you are in life, no matter your interests, from DNA analysis to animal behavior, there is a place for you at UVU. A place to rise, to engage, to succeed, to become. How does Costa Vida create the ultimate sweet pork burrito? We start by following our award-winning recipe, one that calls for everything to be made fresh from scratch every day. Like our beautifully braised pork, seasoned beans, savory sauces, and delicious cilantro lime rice. Even our tortillas are cooked to order. It's a difference you can taste. Treat yourself to the ultimate sweet pork burrito, only at Costa Vida. Did you know that over 43 million Americans struggle with mental health problems annually? 43 million. That's one in five adults. Did you know that there's one death by suicide in the United States every 12 minutes? Did you know that suicide takes the lives of over 40,000 Americans each year? Over 40,000 mothers, fathers, daughters, sons, brothers, sisters, and friends. Did you know that you can help reverse this trend? If you or someone you know is struggling with mental illness, don't keep it to yourself. The latest from KSL 5 News, including breaking news as it happens, and all your favorite KSL shows, ready to watch anytime. Download the free KSL app right now on all your favorite devices. Welcome back to Clyde Field on the campus of Utah Valley University. Brandon Crow alongside Thomas Loomis, still 0-0 at the half. A lot of missed opportunities from Utah Valley in that first half. Nothing really stands out for Cal Poly, but it was a hard-fought match. Got chippy at times, but what do you uh, what do you really expect from this team going forward? Yeah, I think if they can add on to the few chances that they did create there, a lot of it was chippy. There wasn't a lot of clean, you know, super play in front of net to really have an easy, solid chance that they should have finished. Um, so I think is they can add on to those opportunities and, and clean up these type of shots and, and test the goalkeeper actually than hitting it wide and make him make a save, that could be the difference for the Wolverines. Utah Valley, towards the end of that first half, Thomas, you started to see them break through it like you saw right there, just a missed opportunity, and they didn't miss by much. But if we take a look at that first half stats, Again, no goal, 0-0, zero, zero, but surprisingly enough, Cal Poly got off one more shot than Utah Valley did, even though Utah Valley has one more shot on goal in another corner. Yeah, but see, and that's the difference right there is, yeah, there's shots on, on uh, you know, here from Cal Poly, but they're not really testing Mitch Jensen at all. 
He's made one save where he had to lay down and actually, uh, you know, get down there near to the post. But other than that, hasn't really been tested thus far. Utah Valley and Cal Poly's second half will be underway when we return again. 0-0 at the score on UVU TV next. You only need to answer one question. Will you accept the challenge to become? It doesn't matter your situation in life. No matter your interest. Whether your first choice or second chance. There's a place for you. Place for you. Place for you at UVU. Place to engage, to rise, to succeed. To become. Think bigger. Because with UCCU's low interest rates and low mortgage insurance rates, you could qualify for more house with the same payment you could get from other local lenders. A mortgage with UCCU gives you more purchase power. That means more money you can put into your home or back into your pocket. To learn more, visit uccu.com forward slash more house or stop by any UCCU branch today. More house, same payment. Only at UCCU. Inspiring smart mortgage decisions. What's the difference between buying from Murdoch and buying from somebody else? In a word, confidence. You'll love our price match guarantee, our five-day exchange policy, and don't forget car washes and safety inspections for life. If you need a new vehicle, consider Murdoch Hyundai. I promise you'll love it. Get more vehicle for your dollar from Utah's largest Hyundai dealer. Drive home a new 2019 Hyundai Tucson for only $199 a month, or you'll love the new Elantra for only $13,990. Go ahead and compare at MurdochHyundai.com. you got to come and see us. In Logan, Linden, and Murray. Cal Poly Mustangs tied up with the Utah Valley Wolverines 0 0. As you see, the Mustang squad forming around each other, trying to get rallied up here for the second half. And Willie doing what he does best, trying to get those fans, those 12th Wolverines, amped up and ready to go. Hey, look, it's a Vuvuzela left over from that 2010 World <laughs> Cup in Africa. I didn't know that they still had those things. Oh, they're definitely still making. You'll see them around the soccer games here and there for sure. With the Wolverines sporting those neon green midnight black jerseys for Utah Valley. Mark Brown surveying the ground, getting ready for the second half. And we talked again, Thomas, about that first half. And Utah Valley knocking on the door. Cal Poly trying to get to the door. We'll see if something breaks and what breaks first here in the second half. Right. And we have a new keeper change as well. Yeah, exactly. You wonder uh, if they want a little bit bigger presence in net because uh you know at least size wise i could tell that he's a little bit bigger um with the balls that have been coming in uh or you know just preseason and they really want to fill out and give both their keepers some experience going into regular season uh so that you know whoever does win out that position or the backup does have experience you know going into the games that that do matter for your tournament count pauling in utah valley game on second half is underway that official goalkeeper switch for Cal Poly. Jason Hernandez steps off, and number 22, Carlos Arte Hurtado, will step into the wickets. The sophomore, six foot, 170 pounder from Tijuana, Mexico. And we see the uh, second half starting just like that first half ended. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> 
you know, not uh, any miss in the physicality at all. Alec Felix does a nice job of filling the defender coming in, slides in, draws the foul. Some of the most pivotal times in soccer, again, right after the goal is scored and then right here at the beginning of the second half, wouldn't you say? Oh, absolutely. If you could set the tone from the first few minutes and if you can have an early goal, it can make absolutely all the difference. If, if the Mustangs, you know, able to create right there, it makes the atmosphere and your energy just completely different. Mitch Jensen coming way out of his box as Spencer Held was on his horse trying to get that last ball kicked out of play. It will be a Utah Valley throw in. Jaden Wagner doing the honors. Two handed over the head toss. Hey, you're welcome. It's Gatorade. Arthur Hurtado gets his first real touch. And the Mustangs are trying to feel out these Wolverines here in the early minutes. And another great ball here on the near side to Freeman Chuamena. Chuamena back to his back line. This one sent in towards Mitch Jensen who comes out. A lot of pace by Andrew Robertson to close down on that before Jensen was able to get to it. Yeah, not not a bad idea there at all by Josh Graham trying to just ping it over the top and have his uh, outside wing run onto it with the pace that he had. Mitch Jensen, smart. It'll be off his line and get there quick enough. But, uh, yeah, you can see Cal Poly playing it behind too often. So we'll see if they're going to test that out more the second half. Early in that first half, there were a total, I believe, of four yellow cards that were distributed, all four in favor of Cal Poly. We'll see how that affects their aggressiveness here as we start the second half. Utah Valley now on a run. Flag is up on the far side. However, whistles blown. Offsides is the call. Yeah, too bad. A nice little one-two there as Jaden Wagner is able to get around with his pace. Just uh, slightly offsides and was hit a little bit too hard with pace. Would have been difficult to maybe get on the end of or get a decent cross from. Dramana keeping that ball in play. Nice back heel flick to his teammate, Matthew Bautista. Bautista late substitution in that first half. Stays on the pitch, gets the nod from Coach Steve Sampson. Some really good footwork right there by Bautista. Able to get around and then play it to Dramana. Drummena, I should say. Forty ninth minute. Cal Poly has been living in Utah Valley territory since we started the second half. Dangerous ball, top of the box. Here's an opportunity for Cal Poly. Blasted over the top of the net. Wide open look for the Mustangs. Matthew Bautista shakes his head as we take another look at it. Yeah, you see as it skips through, Bautista just falls to his feet as UVU goes to, you know, stop the initial shot. It's missed, and he's wide open back post. Absolutely should have done better for the Mustangs. You know, he, I just gave him the compliment of the great footwork before. You would have thought the front of net would have been a little bit more composed. Probably had time to take a touch even as well, but uh, just unfortunate shot there as, as, as he hits it and skies it a little bit too high. Now here's Utah Valley in Cal Poly territory for the first time, really, this second half. Again, the early stages, embryonic stages, I should say, of this second half, 50th minute. Aaron Meyer just toying with these guys, getting some footwork as this falls to. Here's an opportunity for Utah Valley played all the way back. Now Frischneck's going to gather it. Frischneck's going to have a go, a bouncer. And nothing doing as Arte Hurtado gets a divot. Picks yeah, up de 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 a stop there by, by Frischnick, but uh, just didn't hit it very cleanly. And, uh, yeah, you saw Hurtado make the save, and as he dives, takes the grass with him, just chucks it off the field <laughs> instead of maybe planting it back into place.
Almost like he was using a pitching wedge out there. <laughs> 51st minute, Arte Hurtado. Draw Mena on the near side, calling for it, and he gets it. Keeps the ball in play. Nice ball to Regan Rice. Rice. Rice with the deflected shot toward Mitch Jensen. Mitch Jensen calls off the defenders. We've seen Rice do that now a couple times. The last time on the other side of the field, he played it back to his right foot. This time he played it off to his, excuse me, his left foot. Now this time with his right. Yeah, Freeman Jamena gets that ball at the left back position and able to slot it in the center to find Rice. Rice with his pace uh, cuts in and cuts off Aaron Meyer to get him behind and have that shot. Uh, just unlucky for them that defender gets in the way of it. Brown on the near side. Meyer. Good ball moving by Utah Valley. There's a shot pulled wide right. A little optimistic there by Luis Vargas. Yeah, great play. Layoff there by Aaron Meyer. Vargas able to put it on his left foot. Was hit with good pace, but just way, way too wide. Didn't even test the keeper, as you see here. Hits it with decent power. Looks to curl it and just hits it about you know 10 yards too wide. It almost looks as if just on the opposite side, he could have taken his own time a little bit, maybe one or two more touches. Yeah, you know, yeah, I think he absolutely could have. But uh, as he wound up and the momentum was taking him, I thought it was a decent opportunity to, to take that strike. But he's just got to, again, like we talked about, test that goalkeeper. These guys keep hitting it wide every single time. I don't think the keepers had to make any type of save with his hands thus far. 53rd minute. Utah Valley, as we see it and as you see it, left to right in their midnight black with the green trim. Cal Poly in the white and green trim going from right to left, as we call it and as you see it. Utah Valley still maintaining possession. Brown wide open here on the near side. Frischneck looking for a run. This one headed back toward midfield. Corralled now by Utah Valley. Brown again open on the near side. White looking for him. White winds up. And this one headed away by the Mustangs. The Wolverines lucky that Spencer held at his back turn as that could have been a giveaway with held on the counter there. Brown gets ready for the two-handed toss. Chucks it toward the middle. Frischneck playing it on a hop, trying to take the one touch. Ball on the ground. Frischneck still with it. Ultimately played back to Rice. Rice, we know, has pace. Trying to go on the near side. Spencer held. Spencer held. Dispossessed. Good idea there, but held just doesn't have the composure to bring it down. Longmire does a good job of getting there and then watching it as it comes off, comes off his foot just to be safe and cleared away. Dramino with the inbound flick. Good defense by Utah Valley. Now just trying to clear it upfield. Still keeps it inside. Nice touch by Utah Valley. Vargas showing off his speed. Vargas lays it off. This one sent in toward the box. Meyer trying to do it one time in the air. Couldn't quite get all of it. Yeah, Aaron Meyer is going to be one of the only players that's going to look to hit that first time. Most players don't really have that confidence to really bring it down. They're going to want to bring it down and then go at the player. He's going to test the goalkeeper and go right away. If he would have hit it cleanly, maybe we would have caught him off guard. Every time I mention Aaron Meyer's name, there's a big grin or a smile that comes across your face. Well, you just watch him. There's things like that to where most players are not going to do the things he does. He has a swagger and a confidence about him, but he backs it up. You know, every single time as he gets his set piece, you can almost guarantee, you know, from time to time he's going to sky like he did in the first half. But he'll look to fix it, and it doesn't phase him if he did sky one. The next one he's going to put on frame, and he absolutely believes it. Well, here's an opportunity for him to do so. Free kick in the 56th minute for Utah Valley. Meyer puts both hands up, chips this one in. This one headed out by Utah Valley. Another good-looking chip, though. Yeah, 
He looks to put that on the six and the guy exactly who he wanted to find it. Frischnick gets up in the air here, but it's just a little bit behind him, trying to flick it onto that back post as it sails over. Decent look again by the Wolverines. Foul called against Utah Valley on the far side. And it'll be a free kick awarded to the Mustangs as we see Caprio again showing that sportsmanship, picking up Regan Rice off the field. Yeah, he's been smart. He's definitely one of the most physical players. And again, that's the second time he's come through someone's back. Uh, maybe to, you know, lean on the ref's good side goes and he gives the handshake afterward or helps him up. But uh, I think maybe one more. If the ref, you know, decides it like he did in the first half and giving the four yellows to Cal Poly, then Aaron should deserve one, you know, on the next play as well. Good touch passing by Cal Poly. This one pushed just wide. And we see Cal Poly now at the door knocking on Utah Valley. One of Cal Poly's best opportunities so far. Andrew Robertson gets the ball on his left foot, looks to curl that back post, and just sells it wide. Fifty eighth minute, Felix for Utah Valley. Felix upset with himself. He got more turf than he wanted to on that pass. Giveaway now to Cal Poly. Regan Rice corrals it down. Height, far side. A little bit too strong. Brady couldn't quite get there. Again, 0 0 score from Clyde Field on the campus of Utah Valley University. Brandon Crow alongside Thomas Loomis. Thank you for letting us be a part of your Friday evening, Friday night footy. Friday night lights, Utah Valley style, taking on the Mustangs of Cal Poly. Batista, Dramina. Robertson, out of play, and be a throw in for the Wolverines. Frischneck with his chest, trying to corral it. Gets dispossessed, foul is called. And a free kick for the Wolverines. A little bit north of midfield. Utah Valley elects to take that free kick quickly. Lots of turf popping up as these players trying to find their footing. Yeah, the grass does seem to be a little soft. You're seeing turf come up all over the place. Now Aaron Meyer with another opportunity for a free kick. There's a good look at that turf. Divot. We've seen a couple errant passes. Some frustration from some of these players. This is what UVU wants. They want more and more opportunities, and they've always been good in the air. So another good free kick from Aaron. Aaron swings this one in. This one headed right to the goalkeeper, Arte Hurtado. One of the best free kicks of the night. Good service. I think he might have elected to go a little bit farther, more towards the back post. But Aaron Caprio, great job getting up and uh, rising up to knock that. Just unfortunate that it's no nowhere near to anywhere that's going to test the keeper straight into his hands. Easy save there by Hurtado. And this one goes off of Utah Valley. Will be a Mustang throw-in. Regan Rice quickly with the ball. Loves to go to his left. Regan Rice tried to force one in there. Got dispossessed ultimately. Here's Felix for Utah Valley. Now Meyer. Meyer wide open on this near side. Vargas. He had him for a split second. Now the defense has caught on to him. Instead, he's going to go this way to Brown and Vargas together. White. Fresh neck trying to lay it off. A little bit too strong. Again, good idea there by Frischnick and Vargas looking to play out of 1-2 and Frischnick spinning off. Again, just a little heavy on the, on the through ball. 
61st minute, past the hour mark of the match, still 0-0. Cal Poly with the better looks of the second half so far. And Dramina gives up on that chase. Utah Valley throw in. Referee Alex Crelo gives that one in favor of the Mustangs. In moments like this, Thomas, when the game almost seems a little bit stagnant, if you will, like standing water, how do you, as a player, try and keep up the energy? How do you try and not give that brief moment of lapse where the other team can try and counter in? You know, if you're a smart player, this is the time to, to really get some rhythm. The game is slowed down, energy is a little bit lower, as uh, you know, there's a couple miles on those legs now. And so these are the opportunities to where it's going to be you can maybe catch those defenders off guard. As they're a little bit heavy-legged, you can then wait for those moments to break through, find a through ball, connect some passes. Because I think both teams, they play a pretty possession-oriented game. Um, they, I think, would both like to have done a better job thus far. There's been a lot of fouls like this that's broken up the play and not allowed a lot of possession to be made. Um, so I think each of those, just as you see, Alec, Alex wants to play quick, but gets fouled again by number 19. The team that can develop some possession, slow the game down, and uh, I think wear the other team out as this game goes on might be the difference maker for a goal. With both, how the, with both of these teams and the way that they play, I see this as being maybe just a 1-0 game on one breakthrough moment. So, And all it takes is just a couple seconds for that lapse, for that yeah, breakthrough. Exactly. exactly. This game is always so fast-paced, and uh, you never know how a touch or a play is going to be made. Quick counter like this. There's Rice laying it off. Or Held. Held still keeps it in the box. Held has options. This one poked away by Utah Valley. Still in a dangerous spot. And here's Cal Poly. Cal Poly swings it on the outside. Mustangs swing this one in the box. Kicked out. Ultimately punched back and out of danger by Utah Valley. Now here comes Caprio on the far side. Caprio. Looking for Frischnick up top. Frischnick couldn't break free. Yeah, they want to go early, but that's tough with Frischnick up there by himself. Try and bring that down with two guys around him. You know, I, I think that uh, Garza, if he does it, just keeps the ball to his team and swings it sideways. They could have, you know, crept up the, the field as a group. But uh, I'll tell you, Rice wants that, that play back as he played held in there. Uh, held out a fantastic cut right there on the byline to keep it in. And uh, Wolverine's lucky to come away without a goal scored on them there. Now here comes Utah Valley. Utah Valley in Mustang territory. Aaron Meyer with the flick. Arce Hurtado comes up to make the dive. And it did look like Vargas slipped up in the box, came up short. Yeah, Luis looked to spin off. Aaron Meyer flick through. And uh, he claims here that he's getting tripped up. But... Uh, Again, I think might have been the correct decision by the referee. He's done a very good job tonight, in my opinion. White. One touch passing for Utah Valley in the box. Snuffed away by the Mustangs. Four yellow cards in the first half and 65 minutes in. No cards here. So... Maybe the teams have learned, or the referee has kind of eased up a little bit. Maybe a mixture of both, but a substitution for Cal Poly coming off the pitch. Spencer Held coming back on is Joe McNeonardo. Yeah, you see Zaire Vasquez sub on here for the for Utah Valley. Uh, didn't start the second half like he did the first half. Luis Garza's had a couple opportunities, and, I, you know, unfortunately, like we talked about, I don't think he just quite has that pace to get into behind him once he has that ball. And uh, Zaire 
might do a little bit better job of that. Cal Poly wanting a foul in the back here. This is the most vocal I think I've heard and seen that bench. Yeah, I think that might have been the referees, you know, maybe only miss of the night. I, I might agree with Cal Poly that as they look to counter there, they get bumped and probably could have drew that foul and uh, maybe should have had that. Good slide tackle by Aaron Meyer to disrupt that Cal Poly rhythm. And Dramina will do the honors and throwing it in from the outside. 67th minute, still stalemate. Dramina cuts it back. Waiting for some movement. Graham into traffic. This one tipped out. And it will stay Cal Poly possession. Dramina quickly gets it in. Fight down there on the byline. Leonardo Longmire eventually won by the Wolverines. Brown trying to clear it in, does. And this one booted right back into his own bench. I was going to say, the Wolverines do a really good job of staying composed and get that ball out. Alec Felix not playing the cleanest game that I've ever seen him play. Um, usually connects those easy passes and sends it a little bit far for Garza. It is the first game of the season, and I think that he's just going to develop and get better. The Wolverines as a whole, and I would assume Cal Poly exactly would expect the same, that they've had some touches get away from him. It hasn't been the cleanest game that either have liked. It's been physical and chippy in moments. Uh, but I think the team that can connect will have that breakthrough moment, and, and this could finish 1-0. 68th minute, we see some players get tangled up on the far side. Regan Rice will take that free kick for the Mustangs. It's another benefit if you are a fan. You see the big smiles of those families right there in the action. Regan Rice sets out the free kick into the top of the box, headed toward the corner. And Jensen comes all the way out to corral it and will boot it right over the top of our heads. And it landed right at the center referee. That was actually a pretty, pretty nice touch there. 69th minute, still 0-0, Utah Valley, Cal Poly. Physicality picking up a little bit, just like it did in the first half, halfway through. Good clearance for the Wolverines. First net couldn't come up with it. Now the reset on the far side. Side referee. Says that that was Utah Valley's ball. Utah Valley with a quick throw in. Yeah, you see Aaron Meyer raises his hand. He wanted it even earlier. They got caught up in that physical play, but if they go early, I think they have a better opportunity than even now. Here's for Schneck. For oh. Schneck with the breakthrough. one nothing Utah Valley. An absolute bullet by Blake for Schneck. To counter what I said, you know, they looked to play quick, and they were able to have a nice little one-two. Frischnick, all he needs is a couple yards of space. Able to put that onto his right foot, touch it out wide, and beat the keeper near post. Frischy with the breakthrough in the 70th minute, an absolute laser. He'd been knocking on the door all the evening, and that smile says it all. Take another look at Focus it, one to touch. Puts it on his right foot and slices it up or 90. Can't ask for a better shot. Once you're into the box, he's gonna punish you, absolutely. And uh, it is the man that just keeps on scoring. Last year he left off as, you know, the team's leading goal scorer. And uh, like we, we believe that he would just continue that into his senior year. Blake Frischnecht with an absolute laser. one nothing. the advantage. As you see, again, first goal, not only of this game, but first goal of the season for number nine will not be the last. Mark my words. Now, how does Cal Poly respond? Cal Poly has not been shy with their aggressiveness either. They've missed a couple opportunities close. It's up to Utah Valley to maintain this pressure. Here comes White, Caleb White with a run. 
Caleb White gets the keeper out of position. Ball still in play. Referee does not blow the whistle. I think Caleb White paused because he thought he heard one. There was an open net back there. And the ball was still loose. Yeah, I think he might have wanted one. But, uh, again, I think maybe correct call by the ref. But he was so far out of bounds. I don't know if he could have got to it. Maybe if he got up, burst up quickly, could have tested the keeper to, to get that. But close call there. Could have gone either way. Nice 50-50 tackle. Speaking of good tackles on the far side, Caprio coming through. Disrupt that breakaway on the far side by Regan Rice. Now here is Rice again, showing off his skill. Now here is a free kick opportunity for the Mustangs in a very dangerous spot. Caprio having a word with the officials. We take a replay. He watches Rice, throws his double scissors, fakes to go right and goes left. Again, correct call by the referee, Wagner, just tripping him up. Going to be a dangerous spot. Left-footed curler here. Well, we waited 70 minutes for our first goal. Are we going to have another goal here within a minute of the first? It's going to be a good test for Mitch Jensen. Melgosa is going to hit it with his left. Melgosa chips in. And nobody there on the back post. Dangerous ball. Nobody there to capitalize. Leonardo the only one close. Yeah, I think it's a missed opportunity there by Cal Poly. It's exactly what they want with the left-footed in-swinger. Such a dangerous because any type of flick, that's in the back of the net. But no one there to tap it in on the back post. 72nd minute now for Utah Valley. And Cal Poly. Jensen with it, taking his time. I'm sure he can breathe a little sigh of relief himself. But just for a moment, because the Mustangs will not be defeated that easily. There's a good opportunity for the Mustangs. Lots of open space on the far side. This one chipped in toward the center of the box, headed up in the air. See what the official call is. The official call is a corner. Got good ball into the mix. Longmire coming up slowly as he goes to challenge that and is able to get enough on it to knock it out of bounds. Yeah, just like you said, Cal Poly's not going to go down, you know, without a fight. These guys are going to fight until the 90th minute plus. There's Melagoza again setting up to take the corner with his left. We won! Mel goes going near post this time, punched out by Jensen. Headed back toward the box. Finally kicked out by Utah Valley. Still in Cal Poly possession. Good footwork by Mel Goza to come back and get to it. Frischneck again is looking for the ball. Frischneck, does he have room? Can he get there? Frischneck gets to the ball. Frischneck with the step over, cuts left. Frischneck looking for more room, ball bouncing around. Still falls back to Utah Valley. Caleb White crosses it back. Another low shot. This one right at Arte Hurtado. That was an absolute filth of the highest order move from Blake Frischneck. Yeah, very, very nice scissor to be able to cut into his left foot. And again, I think maybe he should, he should have shot that right away. Wanted to go out, take on two other players. Thought he could maybe do it. White does a nice job of bringing it down. Could have attempted a shot, but with a lot of guys in front of him, Alex to play Meyer out wide. That's exactly the guy you want with the ball at his feet in and around the box because with how crafty he is, yeah, you know, he's going to get a shot off. He just does not hit that with enough pace to test Hortado. Couple substitutions for the Mustangs. Rice checks off as well as Creed McKinnon. And rechecking back into the game, Emmanuel Perez. Fouls called. Whistle is blown. The referee stops time for a moment, reaches into his pocket. And another yellow. 
And I think this is going to go against trying to see who, which number exactly that is. That is not Perez, but Spencer Held trying to plead a case for his teammate. Yeah, Jaden receives that and looks to flick it around and to then spin around. You know, a little dummy around him. Gets clipped there. That one's going to sting as he got stepped on the ankle. But, uh, yeah, I think a deserving yellow as they, you know, stop the counter. In any professional game, that's going to be an automatic yellow professional foul. Stopping the counterattack. Alex Crello and his staff tonight have been very busy. Those forearms are getting a big workout, reaching in the pockets, writing down stuff and holding them up in the air. Yeah, is that number five or six for Cal Poly now? I believe that's the fifth yellow card. Seventy-fifth minute, about 15 minutes left in regulation. We knew this was going to be a tight game. You said something, or maybe around the one nothing mark. We had the one nothing. Cal Poly trying to find an equalizer. Utah Valley trying to find a second goal. Good spin move. Keeping the ball in possession by the Mustangs. Caprio again trying to boot this one in the parking lot. Goes up a row. Souvenir for at least five seconds for a fan. Dramina calling for it on the far side here. Instead, this one goes over his head, goes to Melgosa. Melgosa lays this one off in the center of the box. Nobody there. And Jensen will take it safely. And Jensen with a bionic left knee, looking very confident with that one goal lead, taking his time. White boots this one into the sky. Felix couldn't get it for Utah Valley. Now here come the Mustangs. This one chipped toward Jensen. Jensen chests it down for a little bit of flair and diversity, I guess. Well, yeah, just again, every second off the clock counts, and they know that. So he's looking just to. Uh, to waste any time he can with a 1-0 lead, slow the game down, give his boys an opportunity to, you know, catch their breath a little bit. As you can tell that on the last few plays, they've just kind of been knocking the ball. Haven't been uh, too composed with trying to keep it. I believe the flag was up offsides is the official call. Haven't been very many of those. I think that might be the first or second time that we've had an offsides call in this match. Yeah, you're right. 77th minute. Dramina looking for the ball on the near side. Dramina gets the ball, has some space. Melgoza to his left. Instead, he goes top of the box. Here's an opportunity for Cal Poly. Held misses the shot. Zaire Vasquez flicks it up to Blake Frischnecht. Krishna can't keep it in downs. One touch passing by Cal Poly, threads the needle inside the defense. Good closing speed by Caprio. Fantastic jaw there by Caprio. Again, scary opportunity, a great opportunity by the Mustangs to slide in behind. Caprio, good positioning, not to foul him. Keeps his body off of him and is able to get in front of him as he as uh, head goes again to have a shot on frame. Blake Frischnecht on the far side for Utah Valley, throwing his hands up in the air. A couple of fresh substitutions set to come on. Leo Fuchs again for Utah Valley. Becca Rice for Utah Valley. And a fresh pair of legs with Angel De Leon. For Cal Poly, a good look at Aaron Meyer. 
Nice cheeky move as he's able to flick that and cut it around the player again. And all they can do to stop him is foul him. Whistle is blown. Another set piece opportunity coming for the Wolverines. We know how deadly they can be. Fantastic move here by Zaire Vasquez as both step up the double team. He's able to cut around him, gets a hand to the face. That's going to be a yellow card every single time. Two step in, does a sitter, scissor, plays it around him and splits him. Nice drop. Foul. I don't know if he got bumped too much, but he drew it. Ref gave it to him. And again, another set piece. You can expect a fantastic and challenging cross here by Aaron Meyer. Difficult spot to try and place this one in goal, but you never know. Like you said, Aaron Meyer could try anything. Yeah, he'll cross it, put it on that six yard box, back post. No one there, unfortunately, again. Cal Poly will look to counter. And here comes the counter opportunity for Cal Poly. And Jensen catches that right at the edge of the box. 79th minute. A little over 10 minutes left in the regulation. Poor touch by the Wolverines. Leonardo trying to find Held. Held goes down. And this is quite the opportunity here for the Mustangs of Cal Poly. Referee reaching into his pocket, pulls out the magical spray. He's marking his territory, and another line is where he believes. He'll walk off the 10 yards, make sure that they're behind it. Dangerous spot as they talk to run a player, decide who's going to hit this on frame. You have Melgoza, Leonardo, and Held. You can expect Held to probably hit this and put some pace on it. Test Mitch Jensen here. Leonardo's going to take it. He'll send this one high above Mitch Jensen. Number nine, Blake Frischneck. Blake Frischneck checks off. Leo Fuchs and Becca Rice check on. Angel De Leon as well as Creighton McKinnon check back onto the pitch for Cal Poly, for Jackson Brady. As Mitch Jensen takes his time yet again, less than 10 minutes to play in regulation. Blake Frisch next goal in the 70th minute, the difference maker so far. Ah! Becca Rice gets in a little physicality of his own. And Cal Poly a little bit upset that there's been Little to no cards, essentially, yeah. for Utah Valley. You know, this is where the refs get into that discussion of not being balanced or not calling it, you know, both ways, as people will say. He's definitely pulled out plenty of yellows. And uh, I would have expected on the last two that the Wolverines deserved yellows. Uh, I would say on the next foul, they're definitely going to get it if they don't calm down. Here's the free kick for Cal Poly, and a booming one it is, but right at Jensen. Two-handed grab, nice and easy. Great secure hands there by Miss Jensen. No one there to test him and challenge him for that ball. Good ball movement by Vargas. This so one played back up toward top. Here's Aaron Meyer. Aaron Meyer, this one falls towards his feet. Swings in toward that far post. Kicked out of play, and this will be another Utah Valley corner. Great pass there by Mark Brown, and a nice flick to get it to Aaron Meyer's feet. Looks to play a back post. No one quite there. Defender, you know, 
knocks that out of bounds and wasn't too far away from the goal. A little scary moment there for the Mustangs. 83rd minute, halfway through, Aaron Meyer jogs toward the far side of the pitch. For the corner kick will be the fourth corner kick for the Utah Valley. Again, Blake Frischnick's goal, the difference maker. 1-0 Wolverines on top of the Mustangs at Cal Poly. Aaron Meyer sets up for the corner. Puts both hands high up in the air, sends his winner toward that back post. Headed straight up into the air. Felix goes up and over a defender. Right into the hands of Arte Hurtado. Becca Rice for Utah Valley. Leonardo in pursuit for Cal Poly. Becca Rice pulls back. Caprio looked to Longmire. Now Longmire boots this one upfield trying to find Vargas. Vargas with the dummy. There's Leo Fuchs. Leo Fuchs has the wide open side on the left. Leo Fuchs tries to go one on one. Leo Fuchs has an opportunity. Leo Fuchs tries to curl one in. This one goes out wide. He had two options on the left hand side of the pitch. Yeah, he had Aaron Meyer early. I think maybe if he has that back, he looks to play him, but you can't blame him for going one-on-one. -on -one. It's absolutely dangerous. Defender does a nice job of staying with him. He just can't get his hips around to be able to put that back on frame and sells it wide at the post. You like those opportunities, though, and, and UVU is going to fight to try to put one more in and close this game off with six minutes left. That ball looked like it was out of play. Referees say no, it was not. And then finally a late whistle comes in. And the far side judge says that's a goal kick for Mitch Jensen. Yeah, I see Mark Brown's you know, decision to try to let that run. Uh, you wonder if maybe he needs to be a little bit more safe and just take that out of the air and clear it as Cal Poly is almost able to save that and would have been a dangerous play if so. 85th minute in regulation. Looks like Coach Sampson has one more sub in mind. Regan Rice right next to him in the coach's box. Looks like he's ready to come back in whenever Coach wants him to. Cal Poly trying to see if they have a little magic left in the tank. Becca Rice trying to find the ball instead. Dramina gets it, plays it back. And here's Cal Poly train, playing keep away. And they're going to send this curler. Easy two hopper. Three, four, five, six hopper now to Jensen as he lets it go all as far as he can. Yeah, it's a beautiful play there by Jamena and uh, Melagosa. Unfortunate pass there is Held's not even in the area as Melagosa goes to play. I know they want to push it forward in the last five minutes and try to find an equalizer, but they've got to have better, better passing and it's got to be to you know, someone's feet or chest for them to bring it down and be able to test Mitch Jensen, Mitch Jensen to have shots on goal. Regan Rice set to check in for Leonardo for Cal Poly. 86 flirting with the 87th. Hard foul coming in from behind Leo Fuchs. And could this be the card that you were talking about? Yeah, I absolutely. do believe it is. Cap or, uh, Leo Fuchs goes in for the challenge. He does go for the ball, but as he gets there late, just hip to hip and takes him out. He knows that he's given the foul. Doesn't want the yellow, it's given it nonetheless. This is a good opportunity. They stop the clock and it's going to be hit into the box against Wolverines. A missed header by Cal Poly. They had the position. Josh Graham was there, just barely missed the back flick header. Went right to Miss Jensen. Yeah, great ball in. Any type of flick there from the Mustangs, that's over Mitch's, Mitch Jensen's head. So a little testing and scary. Those set pieces are exactly what they want and, and uh, going to be dangerous in these last few minutes of the game. 87th minute, halfway through. Jensen taking his time for the Wolverines. one nothing lead they cling on to, courtesy of a Blake Frischnicht wonder goal in the 70th, slicing into the top corner. 
held, keeps it in play. Here come the Mustangs. Pushed out to the far side, held, retains it. Spins, turns, goes to his left on the ground toward Jensen. Jensen signals that he got it. And bodies all over the floor. As held shot, the ref's going to call a late, late uh, tackle into his ankles there. Absolutely poor decision by the Wolverines as that wasn't challenging Mitch Jensen whatsoever. They're going to have another shot, stop the clock with three minutes left, and have a shot across here into the mix. This will be testing for Utah Valley. Spencer held. Getting stretched out by his teammates. Referee looks over toward the Cal Poly side. No trainers or anything have been called. And Spencer Held will take his time knowing that the clock is stopped. Daniel Clem. Eddie Melgoza helping their teammate up. Melgoza looks like he's going to be set to take this kick. And Spencer Held really grimacing. He's holding that right knee. Walking very gingerly toward that center box position. Like you said, Thomas, danger time for Utah Valley as Cal Poly is right here with an opportunity to equalize late in the match and force extras. Can they do so? Does Cal Poly have the final magic? This one swung in just barely over the top of the net. Great opportunity there for uh, Mergosa to get a shot on frame. Just slightly overhits it, sends it above the crossbar. Nonetheless, pretty good shot. Wish he had it back to hit it with just a little bit less pace. But scary moment for UVU as Mitch is tested. They able to grab the bar and knows that it's going over. As that ball went over the net, a collective sigh or gasp of breath, I guess you could say, came over Clyde Field. Caleb White flicks it on the far side. Mustangs staying in play. Referee keeps his whistle. Aaron Meyer. And this one falls out of play. 88th minute. Here come the Mustangs, trying to find some last second magic. This one goes out of play. Foul called against Utah Valley, throw in for the Wol excuse me, for the Mustangs. Oh, I beg your pardon, that looked like it was out of play, but it is just in play, it'll be a free kick. Free kick opportunity sent in toward the center of the box, headed up in the air, headed back toward box by Cal Poly, still in the air. Regan Rice with it now. Little over a minute left to play. Regan Rice down towards that byline, kicked out of play, and it'd be a corner kick for Cal Poly. About 90 seconds left in regulation. Cal Poly going to send in everything that they got. Arte Hurtado is right at the midfield marker for the Mustangs, should they need him. Here's the in-swinger toward that back post, headed up and over the bar. Held absolutely has to do better. It's a fantastic cross to the back post. As it flies in here, you see 99 held, backs up, finds the ball. Has just got to put that back across and make Mitch Jensen make a save. Doesn't have the composure and sends it wide left. And you could see the look of frustration on his face as soon as he turns around and knows exactly what he should have done. Yeah, he gets away from Longmire. He's got five feet of space between him and the next defender. He has to put that back on frame. Foul's going to go against Cal Poly. And Utah Valley taking their time. Felix motioning to his teammate easy. We're just going to let this one ride out as the Mustangs sprinted back to get on defense.
We're going to send this one in toward Becca yeah. Rice. Becca yeah. Rice in the box, Three. penetrates, cuts Seven. to his Four. right, then back to his left, Five. back to his left. And this one will go Two. out of play. One. And that is how the home opener for Utah Valley will end. Utah Valley on top, victorious, 1-0. Blake Frischneck's first goal of the season, breakthrough in the 70th minute, is the difference maker. Yeah, great battle. We knew it was going to be a fantastic night of soccer between both sides. You can always expect a great game from Cal Poly out of the Big West. And uh, UVU come up with their, again, they do not lose at their home and openers. They win tonight 1-0, able to find that breakthrough moment, which I assumed it would come down to, just one or two of those moments to uh, take advantage and finish it off. It's a great way to start uh, their season, great way to play at home in front of a crowd.